folks, welcome back to another daily unboxing video with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today, we're taking a look at this little guy right here, Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault, the ultimate competitive miniatures game. It's a core set. Uh, this is very similar. I, I would actually say identical uh, without actually having read through the rulebook yet to uh, Warhammer Underworld Shade Spire. It's just a second core set that comes with two different factions, two different boards, all the cards you need for it. So uh, this looks like a perfect solution to not having to buy two of the original core sets. You can buy one of the original and then one of this one and then you have enough to play uh, anywhere from two to four players. But anyway, uh, so you're going to be getting everything that you see on the box here. So let's go ahead and uh, crack it open and uh, see how all this is. So that's that. And uh, let's see here. Got this. All right, so we have the rule book, of course, and all the stuff that comes in that. Let's see, looks like there's a, a uh, assembly guide as well. So, let's see here. All right, so we have learn to play, and then you have the uh, putting together of the different, uh, the night gaunts and the Eternals, Stormcast Eternals on the other side. All right, and then you have a shorter uh, Learn How to Play. That gives you all the basics. Thorns of the Briar Queen. Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty cool name. And then uh, Storm Sire's Curse Breakers. That looks cool. Oh man, I like their maces and spears. Those look really cool. Oh, Magic Dice. Okay, so there is something new that comes into effect. Uh, the original set only had the attack and defense dice, but now we have some blue magic dice as well. All right, that's cool. Uh, looks like all the other components are the same. There's a chasm token and a scattered token. Interesting. All righty. Um, there's a tutorial playing the game. Uh, all that good stuff. Combat, yeah. All right, and then the battlefield. So you have learn how to play, and then the more in-depth rule book that has uh, probably you know different types of things. Looks like some just a little bit more detail. What's going on? Okay, and then we have yeah the sprues, sprues, sprues. All right, let's see, and. We have two, if I remember correctly, they are double-sided. Yep. So you have two double-sided boards here. That's one side and the other. Oh, that's, that's pretty neat. Oh man, all the skulls underneath there, gross. All right, and then we have a punch board with all of the different tokens and so forth on there. So. Let's uh, punch these out. Looks like they come out pretty, pretty well. They're not so loose that they're falling out, but at the same time, they they come out pretty pretty easily. So that's good. And of course, we have a whole bunch of different. Look at all those shards. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Chasm die. I mean that chasm one. That's cool. All right, and uh, you have the other board here on the other end. So you have this side, and then the other side. Huh, now this is something new as well. Did the other board have red spots on it? Red yeah, it did. The red areas are over here as well, so, and here. So that might be different. I wonder if they are just impassable like the uh, like these were. Well, I guess not. That would be impassable. Don't know what those are, but we'll get to it, I guess. All right, and then we have the uh, Stormcast Eternals. There are three of these guys. These look like the, they are the easy to put together versions of uh, War, Warhammer's, uh, you know, Games Workshop's uh, models, so that's good. And then we have the Night Gaunts or the, uh, what were they called? The something of the, of the whatchamacallit queen. Uh, I, I just love these bases too, man. These bases, I love it when uh, companies are doing that now. 
because I'm, I'm, I'm horrible at basing miniatures. So when they have something that uh, I can just paint and it looks really cool, really love it. All right, and then we have the dice here. All right, and so they are identical. The attack dice seem to be identical to the ones that were in uh, Shadespire. And these magic dice, of course, are are different, but they have different faces on them. Looks like a lot of magic abilities. You can have a, um, a critical attack there with the magic dice. So these are nice. Um, we have a sample chapter. The mirrored, oh, a sample chapter of a book, it looks like. All right, that's cool. That's interesting. That's something that didn't come in the other one. Uh, let's see, Night Vault. This was just beginning, just the beginning. So, of course, that's a plug for Age of Sigmar. Um, and let's see here, some of these different... Uh, some of these different cards. Let's get these open. Ba -ba -ba. All right, so let's look at some of these. Uh, oh, these are extra cards. I don't want to look at extra cards yet. I want to see. All right, these are the these are the bad guys. Let's take a look at these guys first. All right, let's look at some of their some of their objectives here. Let's see. All right, some of the objectives. Annihilation, score at the end of this phase if all enemy fighters have been taken out of action. Okay, that's par for the course. Score this in the third third end phase if there are no enemy fighters in your territory. Well, that would be a combination, wouldn't it? Uh, objective, hold objective one, hold objective two, three, four, and five. Okay, so this is a, definitely a, an area control type faction. Uh, score this immediately if three or more friendly fighters are adjacent to the same enemy fighter. Score this in the end phase if your warband took an enemy leader out of action uh, in the preceding phase. Score this in an end phase if you hold all objectives on one or more game boards. Okay, that's cool. And further evidence that this is an area control type thing. Score this immediately if your warband makes a reaction. Well, that's cool. I haven't seen that kind of thing before. Score this immediately if two or more friendly fighters move through a hex occupied by an enemy fighter in this phase. Swarming spirits. All right, so those are pretty cool. Uh, some of the uh, different things here. Confusion. All these are generic ones. Let's get to some of the drifting advance. You can move all chain rasps up to two hexes. Uh, you can push them closer to the nearest fighter in each case. If there's more than one nearest in enemy fighter, you can choose with the chain rasp is which the chain rasp is pushed towards. Okay, so you can choose which is the closest enemy. Endless malice. <laughs> this is a reaction play after this friendly fighter's attack action fails. Uh, you can make another attack action. Okay, against. Uh, the same fighter. It doesn't have to be a different one. Choose a friendly fighter that does not have a guard token. Place a guard token next to them. That's cool. Uh, rending Scream. Uh, it's a cool picture. Kind of. It's creepy too. But um, it's a gambit spell. has two magic symbols here. If this spell is cast, each enemy fighter adjacent to the caster suffers one damage. Ooh. All right. Uh, spectral Touch. And there's a new... A new uh, symbol as well. So this is a magic card, a spell card, I guess. Spectral Touch, first attack, uh, has cleave, uh, eventual cursed reaction, uh, and uh, after an enemy fighter's attack action takes out an adjacent friendly fighter, uh, their attacker suffers one damage. Great fortitude, great strength, plus one damage. Escape artist. Uh, after an enemy is attack action. Uh, targets this fighter and fails, push this fighter up to one hex. All right. Creeping Terror. Uh, after this fighter makes a move action, roll an attack action. Uh, roll the attack dice for the first enemy fighter they moved through that action. Okay. Uh, on, a, on a hammer or a crit, the enemy fighter suffers some damage. Chill Touch. Rolls of the uh, evades are not successes for defense rolls against this fighter. Cool. Driven by hatred. Plus one dice to all their attack actions when this fighter makes a charge action. Strangling coil is a melee attack with three dice and can score three damage. Wow. Oof. Uh, sadistic strike 
uh, three damage, uh, three dice with one damage. Uh, the target has any wound tokens. It gets plus two. Wow, these are cool. All right, so how strong are they? They've they got some strong cards in here. They must be a little weak, maybe thorns. Well, that's their. Oh wow, there's a lot of them. Gee whiz, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whew. All right, so they're moving three. They get it. Uh, they're moving three. They get a. They only have two hit points though. Oh, that one has four. Oh, it's a Briar Queen. Farclave the Cruel has four. Everhanged has three. All right. So it looks like the Chain Rasps are the the cheesy guys, and these three are the big dogs. All right. Uh, this fighter is adjacent to an enemy fighter at the beginning of your activation. Wow. They just have to get next to you in order to become. Uh, inspired and if they become inspired uh, it looks like two three three they're gonna get an extra point of damage and they're going to move faster and they get two dice wow well the briar queen gets two dice anyway so does varclave the cruel and all the other ones get one all right well these are this is an interesting looking faction that's for sure and then we have the Storm Sires, Curse Breakers. Let's see here. All right, last thing here. Let's go, let's go, come on. Um, so, only have three guys here. Storm Sire, Inspired. Uh, so you have uh, Amos Dongard. Wow, these guys are loaded. Three, they have four hit points each. <clears throat> they also have spell actions. Um, wow. Okay. Well, I don't know how each of these are going to work. How do they? How do they go with? Uh, He's getting two dice for defense. The difference here, and then here. Looks like he only goes to one. It's linked, but he gets knocked back one here. But he's doing three damage if he's inspired there. And this one has cleave. So does this down here. Huh. Look pretty cool. All right. Some of their uh, different quests, conquests, hold objective one, four, five. Okay. Supremacy, score this Indian phase. We hold three or more objectives. In phase of your warband, took an enemy leader out. Uh, two or more enemy fighters went down. Uh, fight is one. Uh, if a friendly fighter makes an attack action with two supporting friendly fighters, okay. Uh, harness the storm. Uh, friendly fighter successfully casts a spell. All right. And uh, if a friendly fighter makes a successful attack that deals exactly enough damage to their target to take him out of action. All right. So that's pretty par for the course. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Aether Wing Strike uh, Stance. Friendly Fighters have plus one defense. That's cool. I love it when factions do that. Uh, Gambit Spell. Choose a friendly fighter adjacent to the caster. Remove a wound token from that fighter's spell. All right, from that fighter's uh, card. Cry of Thunder. Uh, if the spell cast, the fighter, that fighter, any fighter is adjacent to that fighter, suffer one damage. Uh, choose an enemy fighter. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, so these are neat. These are really neat. All right. Very cool. Uh, some of their different corpusant staff. It's a spell action. Uh, all attack actions have plus one range. Lightning whip, uh, an additional damage to the target of that attack action. Hurricane step is a, is a reaction. You can push this fighter up to one hex after taking an action. Tempest's Might, plus one damage to all spell actions. Unstoppable Zeal uh, is a reaction. And um, if it takes an enemy out of action, the fighter can make this attack action. Okay, cool. And Warding Blast targets all enemies, roll for each, all adjacent enemies. Wow. All right. Well, these look cool. And uh, that is about it for everything that comes in your box of... Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. See you guys and gals on the flip side. Thanks for watching. Tune in every day for the Dice Tower's daily game unboxing.